Good morning and welcome to our latest podcast. I'm Derek Barrow from Santander Asset Management. I'm joined this morning by our Senior Investment Specialist, Simon Durling. Good morning, Simon. Good morning, Derek. So, following Boris Johnson's resignation, the Conservative Party have begun their protests to select a new leader. He will become the 77th UK Prime Minister. Simon, will the decision the Conservative Party members take matter to investment markets and how might they react to the final choice? It's a really good question, Derek. As you've said, the starting gun has already been fired on selecting a new leader following the Prime Minister's resignation. Over the weekend, several leadership debates have obviously been broadcast to the nation. But ultimately, it will be down to just over 200,000 Conservative Party members that will be responsible for selecting our new Prime Minister. Whilst recording this podcast, the Conservative MPs will go through the final vote to narrow down the selection to the final two candidates. Then after Parliament breaks for the summer recess tomorrow, the final two will travel around the UK hustings where they will debate and be questioned by party members before a final vote will take place and be announced on the Monday, the 5th of September, when Parliament returns for the summer break. And at that point, we'll know who our new Prime Minister is. And could this decision potentially be an important one for investors in the UK? Yes, potentially. I think there are several crucial reasons for this, not least of which will be the economic strategy that the new Prime Minister chooses to employ. Their in-tray will be a challenging one for whoever selected. Let me explain what I mean. Currently, we're faced with the highest inflation for 40 years, not just here in the UK, but also much of the world. The debate in recent months has been about how much and how soon central banks will increase interest rates in a return to somewhere near normal monetary policy. So far, the Bank of England have increased rates to the previous five meetings, albeit at a very modest 0.25% increase, when compared to the Federal Reserve in the US, who in the last meeting increased rates by 0.75%, which is actually the largest increase since 1994. This route to normalising has been made for a very bumpy ride and a painful experience for investors since the start of the year. Bond yields have risen significantly, which in turn triggers bond valuations to fall. In addition, share prices have been repriced on the expectation of higher rates, which may affect companies' future revenues. If it's more expensive for companies to borrow alongside higher input costs for wages and raw materials, their profit margins are potentially squeezed, causing market participants to reevaluate share prices accordingly. So in your State of Play update last week, you explained that any economic strategy is built around two key pillars monetary policy and fiscal policy. Could you expand on this for us? Yes, you're absolutely right, Derek. As I, as I wrote in the State of Play last week, monetary policy here in the UK was actually changed in 1997 when Gordon Brown, the former Chancellor of the Exchequer under Tony Blair's Labour government, outsourced the decision-making to effectively the Bank of England. Now, their task as an independent body is to set interest rates and control money supply to ensure stable prices with a target for inflation at 2%, and also support an environment for economic growth and financial stability. Fiscal policy, on the other hand, is where governments decide how much we pay in taxes, and then how they spend this particular tax revenue on public services. Now, ever since the financial crisis in 2008, monetary policy has dominated our environment, where interest rates have been slashed to near zero and new money was printed to support the financial system. Now, in that particular environment, asset prices, in particular shares, have benefited from this period in which bonds and cash have offered limited reward for investors, pushing people to take more risk. Greater demand for shares pushes up share prices. So how could the decision taken by party members during the summer holidays impact what happens next? Well, I think ultimately the, the new leader, whoever is selected by the Conservative Party members, they need to pick an economic strategy. Now, the backdrop to the environment that they're in is that firstly, you know, markets will be watching closely when the Federal Reserve meet next week with their latest decision on interest rates, which is due on Wednesday. Expectations are that they're going to repeat the 0.75% increase that they put in last month. Some are fearful that it could be as much as 1%. We'll have to wait and see what they decide. Then the week after, the pressure will be on the Bank of England. In the Monetary Policy Committee last time round, they were split about how much to increase interest rates by. 
Catherine Mann was one of the nine committee members who voted for a 0.5% increase alongside two other members. They actually decided to increase by only 0.25%, but by a vote of six to three. Now, her argument in the following press articles that she released was that she was worried about being less aggressive than the Fed, which puts pressure on our currency. Sterling has already fallen 10% since the start of the year and could fall further if the Federal, the Federal Reserve increase by a bigger margin than the MPC. Now, the reason that's important is if the pound falls in value, then our import costs increase either for the raw materials and components that are used by manufacturers to make goods or the finished goods that are shipped in from abroad. This simply exacerbates price rises. So the pressure will be on the Bank of England, especially after the latest inflation figures were announced this morning by the Office of National Statistics. This showed that inflation is at a new 40-year high at 9.4%. Already, we have an indication of how challenging the next few months will be, as Cornwall Insights have made a prediction that the new energy price cap due to be implemented on the 1st of October will be a whopping £3,240, a 65% increase on the most recent April cap and a 260% increase on 12 months ago. The decision about the cap is due by mid to late August. So the new leader, whoever he or she may be, will have to decide how they approach the cost of living crisis, walking the tightrope between avoiding a deep recession and stoking inflation further. Some candidates have already pledged to cut taxes immediately to help working families with price rises, especially the energy and petrol prices. Others have argued that cutting taxes would be financially irresponsible and make inflation much worse. If the new leader does indeed cut taxes now, that may put additional pressure on the Bank of England to tackle inflation alone, which may mean higher interest rates over the longer term, as monetary policy does much of the heavy lifting in bringing inflation down to their 2% target. If markets reassess the path for interest rates, we could see yields spike higher, affecting bond uh, and obviously share values in very much a repeat of what we've seen in the first six months. So this is why, in my opinion, the decision about the new leader could be important for UK investors. Investment markets ordinarily always look to the future to price in expectations. If these expectations change significantly, then we could witness changes in yields and share prices accordingly. Thanks, Simon, for your insights. Given the uncertainty at present, how are the fund management team positioning client portfolios? Derek, the view of our experts is very cautiously positioned given all the uncertainty. Their concerns are not that it's not clear about how much price rises are affected, you know, the economy here, but also, you know, elsewhere. Central banks have increased interest rates and inflation is already starting to cool economies. And economy, you know, economic growth is already slowing based on the data that we've seen so far. But the team need to see more evidence before they can be confident about a tactical move to capture any market upturn. When eventually, effectively, we know where we're at and economically, we're clearer about what kind of grounds we're in. At present, we have position portfolios underweight in both shares and bonds and our overweight cash. Once the economic picture evolves and more conclusive data emerges, then a decision could be taken to remove the underweight positions and potentially move to a place where more risk is put back into the portfolios. As always, the team continue to monitor the situation every day, and we'll act quickly once we are confident of a change in conviction. Thank you, Simon, for that very detailed update. Thank you for listening to our latest podcast. The views expressed in this podcast are the views and opinions of Santander Asset Management UK and do not constitute investment or finance or advice. If you want to explore more of our views and insights, please visit our website at santanderassetmanagement.co.uk. If you require guidance or advice, we would recommend you consult your professional financial advisor. Thank you once again for listening to our podcast, and we look forward to speaking to you again soon.